Heard most it. of our health care yeah. workers haven't had that. I heard a doctor say, when we heard that it could be transmitted through vomit, diarrhea, uh, blood, I heard a doctor say sweat. Is that true? I don't know about sweat myself. Um, I, I just don't know because I haven't looked. Um, I think we all we in, in 40 years of looking at Ebola virus, we have seen it infected. We, we've seen that it has to be contact with a fluid, taking care of a patient or eating uh, meat from an infected animal or butchering an infected animal or something like that. Okay. The virus has to be kept moist. So there are some kinds of viruses in the world that have a hard protein shell, and they can kind of dry up it and blow around. There are other kinds of viruses like HIV and flu and Ebola that have a membrane. And because they have a membrane, they have to be kept moist or wet. That's a fundamental aspect of the biology that can never escape. So if it dries up on a surface, it'll die. Sunlight will kill it. Bleach will kill it. You can only get it if it's moist. Okay, so we know that you can get it by taking care of a patient if you're exposed to those fluids. Yeah. The, the real question everybody wants to know is, could it go up in the air? Well, certainly if you're intubating a patient, you could generate droplets containing the virus that would spread up. And so that is a route in which healthcare workers could be protected. So we need to make sure that there's better respiratory control. And then there's a kind of Ebola virus that was found in pigs, so that's something you didn't know. Mm. And in pigs, it is a respiratory virus. And so it can at least exist in those kinds of, of droplets out of pigs. Now, humans and primates have never been known to make those. So, I mean, the take-home lesson is don't spend days face-to-face with an infected pig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Solid advice. All right, write but, it down, uh, folks. Write it down. I think the thing to do is to, is to monitor what the virus changing and you know let the scientists do their job and see if anything different is happening or if it's you know if the bull is behaving the same it's just we, the research needs to be done and in the meantime we need to protect our healthcare workers as best we can how about the hysterics i mean we had a school here in san diego where a student said you know i missed my class because my sister flew to the midwest and she was on the plane with the nurse with ebola and she had symptoms and then they cleared the whole school out, and, and yeah. it turns out yeah. the story wasn't true. But people are reacting to any kind of symptom now and, and kind of going hysterical. And yeah, what, well, you know, you know, college kids throw up all the time. Sometimes they drank too much, and sometimes they had a bad taco, and sometimes they have a virus. And I think the thing is, is that, the, you know, the school administrators don't want to be the one that said, oh, this isn't a problem, and then you know, what? It's just an abundance of caution. So the thing with an airplane is that the air that comes in from the outside is 3% humidity. That's really dry. So the virus can't survive that. Even if the plane is entirely full to capacity of people, it is 15% humidity. And so the virus can't fly through the air in 15% humidity and survive. It, it is sobering to think that most of the moisture in the air of an airplane cabin is recirculated passenger breath. Yeah. But a membrane-coated virus like HIV or uh, Ebola wouldn't survive that kind of treatment. People are now afraid to fly. It's true. Uh, they're afraid, afraid that they don't know who's sitting next to them and who they sat next to previously or whatever. So, But you're saying it's pretty safe then, unless somebody has it and throws up right on you. So. Well, I think on a plane you're probably much more likely to get rhinovirus or flu or something. And so what you need to do is go get a flu shot because you don't want to be the one that shows up in the Newark airport with a fever and a headache and holiday season getting held up because everyone's suspicious of you. (laughs) (laughs) Right. You will not contract Ebola from sitting next to someone that is not spewing out those fluids. You have to be in contact with the fluids. and You're in more danger from touching a surface in the laboratory than uh, just sharing air. And looking down the road, I mean, you guys are working.